unmuted. This meeting is being recorded. Hello, my name is Slavika Bogdanov. NAP stands for Narcissistic Abuse Victims and Survivors. I created this channel in the hopes to bring more awareness, education, and hopefully save some lives or get some people to really realize where they are and heal from it, heal from trauma, and hopefully one day soon thrive. So this is um, uh, interviews that I will do with survivors and also with experts to help, uh, help you all, of course, who are out there. So thank you for joining us today. And I have to say, I am super excited and super thrilled uh, to have Brad Yates join us today, who is the, I believe, the expert in EFT tapping worldwide. So I am super, super happy to have you here. Thank you so much, Brad, for joining me today. It's an oh, honor. Oh, my pleasure, Slavika. It's, it's great to see you again. It's been a long time since we chatted. For sure. It's been very long. And I've been tapping with you for the last 12 years. I tell everybody it's one of the best things to do. I, 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 I'm not sure I shared with you, but I did a few French on YouTube, free French videos on tapping. And some of these have had half a million views. Uh, one of them is uh, bringing more miracles in your day. And I have comments every day of people living things that they never thought would happen and opening up to more great things in their lives. So you bring a lot of good to a lot of people. Um, so thank you for that. And uh, for we might start by explaining a lot of people still don't know what EFT and tapping is all about. So maybe we can break that uh, ignorance barrier yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for good. Yeah, ab absolutely. So for those of you who are have come upon this and are wondering, what the heck is EFT? What is tapping? So EFT is short for emotional freedom techniques. And, and a lot of us do simply call it tapping because we are literally tapping with our fingertips on different places on our face and torso. And if you are new to this, I totally understand that it looks a little strange. You might be going, what? So, but there's a very good reason why we do this. It's based on acupuncture. So for thousands of years in Chinese medicine, they have said there's a flow of energy through the body along these pathways that are called meridians. And when this energy is stuck, we don't feel so good. And we don't think as clearly, we don't make the best choices. And when this energy is flowing naturally, we experience our natural state of health and well being, physically and emotionally. So in traditional Chinese medicine, the doctor would stick needles in these key points, and we're just stimulating those same points by tapping. And it's a profound stress relief technique. We have a growing body of scientific evidence validating this as a stress relief technique. Uh, we have cortisol studies. Cortisol is one of the stress hormones. And in repeated trials, the, the subjects doing the tapping, their cortisol levels drop dramatically. We have fMRI studies where you can see the brain activity and brain scans and where abnormal behavior where it's lighting up and after the tapping where that calms down. So it's not just that a bunch of us are tapping going, yeah, I think I feel better. <laughs> we have the science showing that. And so when we look at the upsets that we might feel from past experiences, from abusive situations, and we hold that in our energy, this is a powerful technique for being able to clear that out of our bodies and move from NAVs, from a narcissistic abusive victim to survivor and eventually to a thriver. And that's what we want to do. We want to tap into that, that journey from victim to survivor to thriver. So, and I've been uh, tapping and I, I really, I tap every single morning and I know that as soon as I feel I'm on balance or I'm no longer on my, I call it a rainbow, I'm no longer on my rainbow, I know I have to tap again. I know there's something inside of me that's that's disconnect or that is that is not feeling uh, well. And 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 tapping does release a lot. Now I'm I'm sure a lot of people can understand the acupuncture linked to physical pain, um, but might be not understanding the acupressure uh, or the tapping relating to 
uh, non-physical pain, emotional pain, but also I tap on having more money. I tap on having more love. And my, some people might not understand. So how does that connect now to this acupuncture kind of thing we're doing here? How, how does tap it on your face help with so many different areas of life? And I, I like to say that the extent to which we're not experiencing what we say we want, whether it's more money or more love or more emotional freedom or more physical freedom, the extent to which we're not experiencing what we say we want tends to be the extent to which we are resisting it. And we resist things because of stress, because of fear. There is a part of us that says it's not safe. And especially for victims of any kind of abuse, safety is a big issue. And so we then, sometimes at a very unconscious level, consciously we say, I want all this. We have our vision board of the life that we want. And the 10%, five to 10% of our mind that's conscious is going, yes, I want that. The other 90 to 95% is going, it's not safe to have that. Yeah, we, you fantasize about it all you want, but we can't have that. So that comes up as a stress in our body. When we have an opportunity to go out and do something, to do a, some sort of business deal that could bring more money, to do some sort of social exp, um, event that could allow us more friendship or possibly more love in our lives, whatever it might be, we've got like this chess grandmaster in our head who's thinking 50 moves ahead and is going, <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, move this, 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 no, checkmate. Uh, this, this, check, no, do not make that move. Stay right where you are. And so we sit here going, I'm not moving. Why, do, why don't I have what I want? Because part of us believes that we are brilliantly protecting ourselves from what else is going on. And so if we look at tapping as nothing more than stress relief, it allows us to look at, okay, that's why I'm making the choices that I make. My life is created by the choices that I'm making, the choice to take an action or to not take an action, to do something healthy or do something that is objectively unhealthy. And we do that all the time. We, we say, I want to have a healthier body, but we don't exercise or we eat the wrong foods. And I like to say that self-sabotage is simply misguided self-love. So rather than beating ourselves up and go, I said I wanted to lose weight, but I just ate a whole box of cookies. It's not beating myself and go, oh, I'm so stupid. It's like, oh, isn't that interesting? The part of me thought the more loving thing to do was to eat that box of cookies. Part of me was saying, yeah, objectively being healthier would be better, but in the moment I'm feeling pain and that box of cookies is gonna ease the pain, at least for right now. Tomorrow I'll deal with something else, but for right now, this is how I need to take care of myself. So you can look at all of the, the different habits and behaviors you might have that, that seem unhealthy. And even the beliefs that you hold on to and the things that you say to yourself. And part of you is saying, this is how I need to keep myself safe. And especially for folks who have been in an abusive situation, who have been raised with abuse um, or have been in an abusive marriage, whatever, there are all kinds of messages about what's dangerous. And so it's understandable that we may have some, some pretty wonky ideas about how to keep ourselves safe. And, and so again, it comes up as stress to stop ourselves. The stress is how we, it, it's like the electric fence around our, uh, our area. And if we try to stray outside of that, we get shocked. And it happens at such a subtle level, we don't even know. You know, we're standing there in the grocery store thinking, I wish I could meet somebody and there's an attractive stranger over there. And our chess grandmaster has already gone through the next several years that ends up in divorce. And before we're consciously aware of it, we're down in another part of the store going, gosh, I wish I could meet somebody. <laughs> and it's brilliant. It's a brilliant protection mechanism based on this fear. And as we do the tapping, we calm down that fear response. And we look at why do I feel like I need this to keep me myself safe? And is it possible that I could handle putting myself out there, that I could handle taking these actions? That's amazing. And thank you for explaining that, uh, because it's true that we, we might be questioning now how tapping can solve such a practical 
day-to-day -day, uh, thing in our life. And I do appreciate that. And I just spoke with uh, with the victim. We both had, we both shared uh, almost the exact same uh, past where it's a family abuse from the mother, the brother, whole family. And what I told her, because she said she keeps on attracting uh, the same people, she keeps on attracting narcissistic abusers. And we even talked honestly about the fact that we even become sometimes the abuser to protect ourselves from being abused from narcissistic abuse. So it's kind of a monster now. It, became, it becomes bigger and bigger. And what I told her is that we only attract what we're comfortable uh, exactly. with. And I took that from your videos where you often say that you you cannot attract something that you're uncomfortable with. So how does tapping help you become more comfortable with what is the unknown, the uncomfortable? Yeah. And it's looking at what feels unsafe about it. And there are absolutely, it's a very common thing for people who have been in abusive relationships to continue to find abusive relationships. Not because you're bad or stupid, not because you're weak or lazy, but because something says, this is what I know. This is what feels familiar. Even if it's physically unsafe, even if it's emotionally unsafe, at, a, at some level though, it feels safer. It's like, I, I wouldn't know how to deal with somebody who treats me with kindness and respect. You know, the, the moment someone is, is nice to me, I start to get suspicious. But if they are mean to me or even physically abusive, it's like, this feels like home. This is, this is, what, this is where I belong. This is what I, I know and what feels safe. It's not objectively safe, but to that part of the mind. And so we look at why, what am I looking for here? Why does that feel safe? And just allowing ourselves to be aware of what we're feeling and, and, and as we go through the tapping, and, and coming from that place of compassion, recognizing that self-sabotage is misguided self-love. That part of this that, you know, might scan the room if we're, you know, if we've gotten out of an abusive relationship and now we're at a, at a, at a bar or a party and we're scanning the room, look at the single people, nice, nice, nice jerk. Hi, how are you? <laughs> because it's like, that's the sort of person I know how to deal with. It's gonna be painful, it's, but, it'll be familiar and it's all done at an unconscious level. And it's to have compassion go, I love and appreciate that part of me that is looking for what is known. And it may be a feeling of worthiness. If, you know, the abuser might have in the past might've said, this is what you deserve either in, in actual words, because oftentimes that's what it is. And sometimes it's just in the behavior and especially if it happened as a child and in our young mind, we decide, well, I guess this is the sort of thing that I deserve. This, I deserve this kind of punishment. And so we will go looking for someone who will give us what we believe we deserve. And someone who could give us more, someone who could treat us with love and respect. It's like, oh, I feel unworthy and undeserving of that. We can't allow that for ourselves until we clear away the misunderstanding and recognize, wait a minute, I'm a magnificent child of the universe, worthy and deserving of the best this world has to offer, worthy and deserving of love and respect. I don't know why I ended up with people who couldn't do that, I, people who are incapable of that because of their own fears, because of their own abusive backgrounds, you know, that they ended up in that situation. I feel sorry for them, but I don't want to be there anymore because there's nothing that is too good for me. Yes, that's quite a, you know, that's quite a change of mindset and of uh, recognizing who we are uh, profoundly um, and changing that uh, self, self-talk, I guess, uh, from accepting something that is unacceptable as being familiar to something that is so unfamiliar, but should be the acceptable, the only thing we accept. Um, and I do agree with that. And it's, it's a it's a journey, of course. Um, so and and I understand like I do that a lot with with tapping, and I I hope everybody understands the power of it. Um, so 
if someone lives, and also, so the other, I know the other question potentially that's going to come up is how fast are the results? Like, what can we expect? You know, do I tap once? Do I tap 10 times a day? Do I, you know, what, what does, do I do? My take on that is I tap until. <laughs> I tap until I get the result because it's so simple to tap. It's something you can do. So you know, why would I say, okay, well, if I can have that emotional freedom and get what I want in um, a day or two of tapping, then it's worthwhile. But if I had to tap for a year, I don't know. I'll stay stuck in where, where I'm at if it's going to take that long to get, it's like that year is going to pass one way or the other. So you can have that year pass and be more emotionally free, more happy, more, uh, financially free, whatever it might be a year from now, or say, yeah, I can't be bothered to, to do this tapping on a daily basis. And I recommend it on a daily basis. It's to me, it's energy hygiene. We have physical hygiene, like brushing our teeth, taking a shower. Most of us do it before we need it. Most of us do it on a daily basis, whether we need it or not. We don't wait for three weeks and then find the people are holding their nose around us and go, that's right. I haven't taken a shower in three weeks. I should do that now. So stress is always building up, especially in this day and age where we're all walking around with a little device that's constantly telling us, here's something else to be stressed out about. Were you having peace of mind? Well, let's nip that in the bud. <laughs> uh, did you hear what the government just did? So we are constantly having stressful messages. So we want to be clearing that out because we make, when we're stressed out, we don't think as clearly, we don't make the best choices and our lives are made up of the choices that we make and we're making these choices so often based on things that happened in the past or our beliefs about ourselves because of that and as we clear that up then we have when we have more peace of mind we think more clearly and we make better choices so how long that's going to take? We never, we never know how long it's going to take. It's like when people say, how long is it going to take for me to, how many times do I have to watch one of the money videos before I'm a millionaire? It's like calling up a gym and the, the people at the gym can't see what you look like and see what kind of shape you're in and saying, how long will I have to come to the gym before I have a rock hard six pack abs? And it's like, you have no idea. It, it might be that you're already have abs and you, you know, and you're going to have it already. And it may be years. Um, so, but it's like, that's what I want though. I want to have the best life possible. And if it takes me the rest of my life and I'm always clearing stuff, I'm worth it. And I hope that everyone watching this will say, yeah, I'm worth it. I think that's the biggest take is to understand that the time it takes to go on the path of more of everything, more abundance in every way, is worth it and that they are worth doing that work for themselves and that it's actually the only way um, doing the work on ourselves is the only way possible to get more of everything of the good that we want in everything uh, so yeah i totally agree with you and if we are in the stress i call it the problem mindset or the stress mindset or the victim mindset, you're only going to make decisions that are going to bring more of that into your life. So it's going to continue in that vicious circle endlessly uh, compared to if you take a stand and start changing things and, um, and, and shifting those emotions uh, and actually removing. I, I don't know if I'm correct, but I always have the feeling that doing tapping is like removing like declogging our system from connections of emotions with certain ideas or certain goals or certain things and it's like the taking those apart like removing the negativity that we stuck on some beliefs and just cleaning that up and removing that so that we everything becomes more easy and and fluid and that we and I see when when I'm in the, when I'm in the zone things come to me I don't even have to do anything it's like I get these 
and and I have this book called Out of the Blue. It's all the things that come out of the blue. That's literally the good that comes to me that I haven't had to do anything for. When I'm in that zone of I deserve and I tapped, I did, I did my tap in the morning, I did my meditation. I'm really in that good zone. Suddenly everything unfolds and I have, there's no effort, right? And, and I saw that in many of your videos where we, uh, sometimes we feel like we have to put that effort to get somewhere, but actually we don't, we don't have to, we just have to be in that, the, the great mindset and the great vibe, right? And tapping does that. So uh, I totally agree with you on that. Yeah, it's like we're trying to force that flow beyond that clog. So yeah, so, so tapping is emotional draino. <laughs> it's, that's uh, there clearing, you go. Clearing, clearing that out so the flow can happen. And yeah, and as that flow happens, all these wonderful things can come down the, the pipeline. And it's just acknowledging that part of us has said, yes, but I've had so much crap in my life. There's much more crap that will come down the pipeline. And that's why I need that, that block in the drain. So it's having compassion with ourselves. Not, we're not bad or stupid for having that clog in the drain. We feel that's what's necessary to keep us safe, but it does make things more effortful. And it also blocks all the good that can come our way. And, and one of those things is just the, one of the, one of the main ones is a doubt that we are deserving of more. And if you're open to it, we could do a quick tapping round on that. Yes, I'd love that. And for everybody else to see how it goes. So yes, please let's. Excellent. So I, when we're tapping, it can bring up uncomfortable emotions because we're, we're going and looking for it. It's just like if you're cleaning your room and you think your room looks relatively clean and then you move a sofa and you find there's dirty laundry under there, it's uncomfortable. But you wouldn't say, oh, well, cleaning obviously makes the, how, the room dirtier. It was already there and it was the process of going and looking for it that we find it. So that can happen with tapping. So I'd have to ask you, anyone who wants to tap, you need to take full responsibility for your own well being. Now, we're going to do a, a simple round where we're not going to be going and digging into too many deep things, but that stuff can come up. So if you know that, yeah, if I move my sofa just a little bit, I'm going to find a barrel of toxic waste then you may want to wait till you have someone there for emotional support. You may want to wait until you can work with a practitioner who can guide you through the process. But uh, it's, it, it's a very gentle process and that shouldn't happen, but just give yourself permission to, to decide, I want to wait uh, to go through this. So, but if you uh, are, are feeling comfortable doing it, then uh, just tapping with the fingertips of your next middle finger, and just tap where I tap, and then repeat back what I say along with Savika. Even though I sometimes doubt that I deserve better. Even though I sometimes doubt that I deserve better. I choose to love and accept myself anyway. I choose to love and accept myself anyway. Even though I sometimes doubt that I deserve better. Even though I sometimes doubt that I deserve better. I choose to love and honor myself anyway. I choose to love and honor myself anyway. Even though I sometimes doubt that I deserve better. Even though I sometimes doubt that I deserve better. Because I have all kinds of bad experiences. Because I have all kinds of bad experiences. And part of me has thought. And part of me has thought. Maybe that's what I deserve. Maybe that's what I deserve. So when I think about things being better, so when I think about things being better, part of me says, part of me says, that's for other people. That's for other people. And even though part of me doubts that I deserve better. And even though part of me doubts that I deserve better, I choose to deeply and completely. I choose to deeply and completely love, honor, and accept myself. Love, honor, and accept myself. And maybe anyone else who might have contributed to this. And maybe anyone else who might have contributed to this. Because I choose to be that free. Because I choose to be that free. Right here at the beginning of your eyebrow. All these doubts about what I deserve. All these doubts about what I deserve. Here at the corner of your eye. All these doubts about what I deserve. 
all these doubts about what I deserve. Right under the middle of your eye. All this fear that I don't deserve better. All this fear that I don't deserve better. Right under your nose. All this belief that I don't deserve better. All this belief that I don't deserve better. Right below your lower lip. I have all these experiences in my life. I have all these experiences in my life. Right here where your collarbones just about come together and you can just make a fist and tap over those, that both your collarbones. All these experiences that were really awful. All these experiences that were really awful. About four inches below your armpit. And part of me might have decided. And part of me might have decided. Just tapping around the top of your head. That maybe that's what I deserve. That maybe that's what I deserve. Maybe people told me that. Maybe people told me that. Either in their actions or in their words. Either in their actions or in their words. They were basically telling me. They were basically telling me. I deserve this kind of abuse. I deserve this kind of abuse. I certainly don't deserve better. I certainly don't deserve better. And given their awful behavior. And given their awful behavior. Why would I consider them an authority on the subject? Why would I consider them an authority on the subject? They're obviously not thinking straight. They're obviously not thinking straight. They're not capable of thinking straight. They're not capable of thinking straight. And that's why they hurt me. And that's why they hurt me. So I choose to not listen to anything they say. So I choose to not listen to anything they say. About what I'm worthy of. What, about what I'm worthy of. Because the truth is. Because the truth is. I am a magnificent child of the universe. I am a magnificent child of the universe. Worthy and deserving of love and respect. Worthy and deserving of love and respect. Worthy and deserving of the best this world has to offer. Worthy and deserving of the best this world has to offer. And there is nothing that is too good for me. And there's nothing that's too good for me. And I don't know why I was in those situations. And I don't know why I was in those situations. Where I was around people. When I was around people. Who couldn't treat me as well as I deserve. Who couldn't treat me as well as I deserve. They were too sick to treat me the way I deserve. They were too sick to treat me the way I deserve. But it doesn't define how much I deserve. But it doesn't define how much I deserve. If I give myself permission. If I give myself permission. I can see there's also evidence. I can see there's also evidence. That I'm worthy and deserving of wonderful things. That I'm worthy and deserving of wonderful things. Maybe I've seen some beautiful sunsets. Maybe I've seen some beautiful sunsets. Stars up in a nighttime sky. Stars up in a nighttime sky. There are all kinds of nice things that I've experienced. There are all kinds of nice things that I've experienced. I choose to let that define what I'm worthy of. I choose to let that define what I'm worthy of. And even right now in this moment. And even right now in this moment. Each time I take a breath. Each time I take a breath. Every inhalation is a request. Every inhalation is a request. And every single time the universe says yes. And every single time the universe says yes. Every time I breathe in. Every time I breathe in. I receive oxygen. I receive oxygen. And I'm allowing myself to recognize. And I'm allowing myself to recognize. That's evidence that I'm worthy and deserving. That's evidence that I'm worthy and deserving. And I choose to take a deep breath. And I choose to take a deep breath. And recognize that when I just asked for more. And recognize that when I just asked for more. The universe still said yes. The universe still said yes. You are deserving of more. You are deserving of more. Part of me has always known this. Part of me has always known this. Part of me has always known that I deserve better. 
part of me has always known that I deserve better. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here tapping on my face right now. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't be here tapping on my face right now. If I thought I deserved worse. If I thought I deserved worse. If I felt I wasn't deserving of freedom. If I felt I wasn't deserving of freedom. I wouldn't have even found this video. I wouldn't even found this video. It's safe to acknowledge my worthiness. It's safe to acknowledge my worthiness. I can handle that. I can handle this. I can handle things getting better. I can handle things getting better. Personally and professionally. Personally and professionally. Physically and financially. Physically and financially. I can handle things getting better. I can handle things getting better. It's safe for things to get better. It's safe for things to get better. And I am worthy and deserving of better. And I'm worthy and deserving of better. In body, mind, and spirit. In body, mind, and spirit. And take a deep breath. And wow, you know, that does. <laughs> And it does feel, um, I, I felt uh, a shift inside. You know what I love about your tapping is that you bring very, um, I'd say difficult, if we talk about the room, very difficult, messy rooms to wordings that are so profound and easily understandable. And when we make the connection between, for example, breathing and being allowed to breathe, Somewhere I, I feel it in my nervous system that it makes that connection, that it says, wait a minute, it's true what he's saying. And I feel it deep inside of me that something shifts every time saying, wait a minute. And I remember when I started tapping with you, that was, you know, 12, potentially a long time ago. I, I can't remember, but it was many years ago. I think it was actually 12 years ago. And, um, I remember I couldn't even say the words worthiness. I couldn't even say the words self-love. Like I, I could not, it, it wouldn't come out of my mouth. You know, it was, I was so blocked on those things that I, I would mess up the word. Like suddenly those words would not even be able to come out. So, um, so there is progress and it is uh, incredible uh, the work that you're doing. And so I wonder, people might think also, so, can I just tap with Brad's videos or what's the difference between hiring you and going with your uh, videos online or, or well, maybe you have packages also that people can purchase. Yeah. I, I, I work in different ways. I have a, a new program that I just uh, released at the beginning of this year uh, on tap into your best life that covers different aspects of, of life and what stops us and how to be more motivated to, to make changes I have group workshops, I have private sessions, and I have over a thousand videos on YouTube. So that's a place you can start today is just go and take advantage of, of that catalog of, of videos that are freely available on YouTube. When I work with someone, I can speak more directly to what is personally going on for them, what, what specifically might be there, which can make the work that much more profound and powerful. But start from where you're at, just giving yourself permission to say, I deserve better. And, and like I said, yeah, with the, the breathing thing, it's just a simple th little thing. And we might dismiss and go, well, that's just breathing. It's like, yeah, try going without it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, oh, the universe is willing to give me oxygen. Yes, perhaps the most important thing you can receive. So if the universe is willing to give you the most important thing, the rest of it, why not? <laughs> exactly. Yes, I totally agree. And, and I'm, I'm really happy. We, we, I, I really hope actually that people get it, that people understand just how important tapping can be in someone's life. Like I've seen, I've seen firsthand uh, because I, I've used it sometimes with some of my uh, coaching clients and, you know, I, and I'm not an expert on top of it. So I, you know, you should hire Brad, you know, and I don't do it anyway anymore at all. But I remember this one time 
when someone was in an extremely difficult situation and I had them watch your video and we did it together, a tapping just to ease this because they couldn't even, when you're stressed, you can't even think actually. So he couldn't even think anymore because he was, the anxiety level was through the roof. And after one session, he was from zero to 10, he was at 12. That's what he said. After one session, he dropped to four, which was incredible. So already the mind just goes, Ooh, and now you can start thinking about your problem instead of living in the trauma and the problem. Right. Well, because we go, when we get that stressed out, we go into fight or flight and the prefrontal cortex, the creative, rational part of our brain shuts down. And so we really can't think of anything because it doesn't feel safe. Part of it says, I just have to be able to deal with whatever, you know, impact is about to hit me. And, uh, and as we calm that system down and say, okay, wait a minute, I, I am okay in this moment. And we can think again from our prefrontal cortex, we come up with ideas we never even uh, could have thought of before. It's like, oh, I could do this. I could do that. I could go here. This is possible for me. So the more we reduce that stress, the more ideas that come to us, the more opportunities and uh, the greater freedom to live a happy, successful life. I totally agree. Deserve. And everyone, yes, everyone. Yeah, everyone deserves, hearing the, saying that. <laughs> yes, deserves that. And, um, and thank you. You know, uh, so I will post uh, not only a link to your uh, channel so that people can subscribe and at least start with a few videos. Um, I know for a fact that every time I reached out to you to do a private session, it was day and night. Um, I remember one time in particular where I was stuck in Montreal because of some big issue that happened in my life. And I was at that 12 level of anxiousness when I thought the world was ending. And, um, and it's true exactly what you said that after the session, it, it kind of eased my mind and I started thinking of solutions instead of being in that fight or flight kind of mode. Uh, and I know a lot of um, the NAVs that might be watching are in the fight or flight kind of situation where they might be at home and they don't know how to get out or what to do. And, and so uh, tapping might help them ease that so that they have the best plan of action to, to get out safely and eventually thrive. Um, and so uh, I will post a link to that. I will also put a link. I think it's it's your it's your name, right? It's bradyates.com or .net. Ta tapwithbrad.com. Oh, tap with Brad. So if ever you don't see the link in the description, uh, tap with Brad is the link to go to to find more about what you do. Um, I plan to do a documentary as well, and so I will invite you. Uh, when that is uh, set as well, I think uh, it can it can help a lot of people. And you know, there's so much ignorance. I, I see, unfortunately, so many people lack the information, lack the education. That uh, as you know, as much as we share, we we put ourselves uh, uh, helping those in need and be of service to so many people that that need us and that can really benefit from from this work. So um, again, Brad, thank you so much uh, for your time for tapping with me. It's an honor to have you tap with me here. Um, and yes, uh, please uh, visit uh, Brad's uh, uh, YouTube's and also uh, go to his. Uh, uh, website to get more information and follow his uh, the, the very uh, different courses and things that he does. Uh, like you said, you have group sessions, your individual sessions. I know that sometimes you also do events. Uh, so the more you tap with Brad, uh, the more you will heal. And I see I see the difference it did in my life. So I'm, I'm I can testify to that. And I know. As you said, there's so many now documentation about the, the, the effectiveness of tapping that you should never live without it anymore. So thank you.
Well, thank you, Slavika. It's been wonderful doing this. Uh, thank you for what you're doing, this important work you're doing, and thank you for this opportunity to share this work with folks. Thank you so much, Brad. Have a great day. You too.